Hello, thank you for joining me. This is a bit of a different video from my usual ones. As you can see, we're not out and about somewhere. I'm sitting at home in my house. Now, I'm recording this video during the November lockdown. Um, although, um, by the time you watch it, we'd have moved on somewhat from those lockdowns. You may remember during the first lockdown, I recorded a series of videos from home um, because I simply ran out of new adventures. During the November lockdown, I had plenty of adventures to publish of places I'd visited in um, September and October. So they were published throughout November. Now here we are in November, I'm not out making out and about. So I thought I'd do one from at home. I do prefer to go out and about and make my videos. Some people are very good at sitting at home and talking. For me, I like to walk around and you know show you places show you the real thing rather than sit and talk but you know I'm gonna have another go at it because um, we can't go out and about so much at the moment so during the first few videos I made during the last lockdown three of them were about railway subjects and the other one was about National Trust and these passports which you can buy in any of their shops and you get a stamp at each property you went to so what I thought I'd do this is gonna be a series of five videos well, I'm going to talk you through each passport, give you a very brief story on each property. Now, I know there's seven passports in front of me, so you're probably thinking, well, why is he only going to do five? Well, the reason for that is, this is my first, second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth. The sixth one is incomplete, and this one here, this is my girlfriend's passport. So, what I'm going to do, go in this video, I'm going to go through my first passport, tell you a little bit about each one of them, put them here like this so you can see the evolution of them. By the way, if you get the most modern one, this actually comes in three different colours, might even be more, but you can certainly get it in pink, I think you can get it in bright green, not this green, a really bright green, and I think grey, so maybe when I fill up this one, my next one might be um, green, maybe, we'll have to wait and see, it won't be just yet. Unfortunately 2020 is one of only three years in my life where I've not been to a new National Trust property, the other years were 1997, and 2016. It doesn't mean I didn't visit National Trust properties in 1997, 2016. I just didn't go to any new ones. So I must have just been revisiting old ones. This year, I've hardly been to any. I have been to one or two, but again, they were all revisits. So my first passport, here it is. The first property in it is this one here, Arlington Court. Now, I was a baby when I went there, so I don't actually remember anything from that visit, but I do remember on a later visit, I think it was in the year 2000, we went to Arlington Court. I remember sitting having a picnic and a horse and cart came up the drive, and I thought it was rather funny to run in front of the horse. And I remember running and the horses were getting closer and closer. And eventually I managed to get out of the way just in time before they caught me up, and then we went off on a nice walk down to the O Valley. Second property I visited, was Clifton. Now, Clifton is a property I know very well. It's one I've been to more times than any others. I did at one point volunteer there in the forestry team, which I, I really, really enjoyed. So Clifton, I know really well. I could I could probably talk for hours about Clifton. Um, there's so many different things to see there. There's the water gardens, there's a maze. There's the Parten, you can walk down to the River Thames, it's got its hanging woods. It's quite an unusual shape, it's a long, thin property. Um, it's a, I'd say Clifton's really worth a visit, they're all really worth a visit, but Clifton I do know very well. Third property I visited, St Michael's Mount. Not been back to St Michael's Mount since, and I don't actually remember anything of this visit, but... Um, I have seen from pictures we actually went out on a boat and then the tide was out so we walked back and since then I have seen St Michael's Mount um, if you get the train down to Penzance you do you can see St Michael's Mount if um, if you're coming into Penzance, Penzance if you look out on your left hand side you will see St Michael's Mount so definitely somewhere we should go again in the future. My fourth property was Lan Hydro. Now I do remember something of this visit, we went for a walk down um, away from the property and um, down by the river, I'm not entirely sure which river it was but I remember seeing a class 47 um, go past on the Great Western Main Line down near Bodmin 
Parkway station and part of the estate does go down to near the railway. So I remember seeing a class 47 down there. So that's quite a happy memory. My next property, again, I do remember this Basildon Park. Now Basildon Park was, for me, as a small child, as much as I did like running around exploring the gardens, it was very frustrating because you could quite clearly hear the Great Western Main Line. It's on the section between Reading and Didcot. But you, we didn't, I don't remember seeing any. On a later visit, I remember going there and I found a couple of spots from in the garden where you could see the railway. But I just remember hearing the trains and not being able to see them. Next property was Cannons Ashby. Now, I don't remember anything from that first visit, but I have since been back again. It's a very interesting property. Across the road, there's the old church, which was once part of a priory. So, Cannons Ashby, it's in Northamptonshire. Somewhere perhaps I should go again at some point. Next property was one quite local to me, West Wickham Park. I've been there many times over the years. I've always enjoyed West Wickham Park. I really should go there and do Henry's Adventures video because it's a fascinating property. It's not a huge property, um, or the pleasure gardens aren't huge. The estate is huge. Um, nearby you've got the Hellfire Caves, which aren't National Trust, but again, we should still go there. I find the system of waterways from the River Wye they've got at West Wickham Park very fascinating. There just seems to be water everywhere you go. You're forever walking over bridges, and there's some interesting temples. So. West Wickham Park will definitely go to again. Now my next property, again, I do remember this one, Sheffield Park Garden. And uh, going back to railways, I remember having a picnic, and this time, I could hear steam trains. Of course, Sheffield Park is um, also a railway station on the Bluebell Railway. And after we'd walked around, I remember walking around a big lake at Sheffield Park. It was, you know, very attractive gardens. I thought, you know, it was really, really enjoying it. And um, I couldn't believe it afterwards when we actually went to the Bluebell Railway. You know, for me, it was a great day. We, we, we visited National Trust property and the Bluebell Railway. I remember having a trip on the Bluebell Railway. It was when it only went from Sheffield Park to Halstead Keynes or back. I think we rode behind a U-Class. In fact, have a look at the link on screen now. That's an archive, one of my archive videos from that day. There's no, no Sheffield Park, there is the Bluebell Railway. My next property, Wadston Manor. Um... In Buckinghamshire, it's, it's one I've been to quite a few times over the years. It's built in the, the style of a French chateau. It's one of the Rothschilds properties. And um, my main memory from there is the aviary. There's a huge aviary full of birds. And um, there's also a, um, a load of rocks, which I always found quite fascinating. So, yeah, that, that's, again, like I say, I'd say well worth a visit. They're all well worth a visit. So... You know, when things get back to normal, if you're wondering what to do, go and visit some of these places. Next one is Claremont Landscape Gardens down in Surrey. Um, another, um, it's a landscape garden. There's not actually a house there, or there is, but it's not National Trust, so you can't go in the house. It's just landscape gardens, beautiful gardens, quite a few temples, uh, the grotto, so you walk around the lakes. I remember going there again a few times over the years and you can go up onto the hills and get great views over the garden. I really should go back there, I haven't been back there for a while. My next property, Stowe Landscape Gardens. Now Stowe is, I'd say it's got to be one of the best, one of my favourite National Trust properties. It's so vast, there's so many different temples and just about everything. Um, I remember going there numerous times over the years and um, th there's the Stowe School which isn't actually National Trust. I have been in there on a different visit but the school, the old house is the school, the stately home is the school um, so that's not National Trust but the landscape gardens are and I could, I like, if I did a Henry's Adventure video I'd probably have to do more than one to show you everything so at some point in the future we'll go there and do that. Now my next one is uh, Westbury Court Garden. It's quite a small garden. I remember, I don't remember too much. It's down, um, it's not Westbury in Wiltshire. Um, it's Westbury on Severn, so it's near the Severn Estuary. I remember there was these long canal-like gardens, so these long sort of linear ponds. And it wasn't a huge place, but I sort of remember walking around, around the gardens. Next one is Dirham Park. Durham Park was one we used to go to quite a lot. If we went ever on holiday, 
to the Wye Valley area where Tintin Abbey is. We used to go on holiday there quite a lot. We quite would often stop at Durham Park on the way or on the way back. Um, I remember, so you've got the house and the gardens out the back. There's a church up on one side. I don't remember too much about the gardens. I haven't been there, but we did used to go there quite a lot when I was little. Well, and the next one is one I couldn't possibly forget. I've never been back there. It's Corfe Castle. Now, Corfe Castle, I've been past it numerous times on the Swanage Railway, but I've not actually ever been, been back since that visit. But Corfe Castle, um, I really should go there. Great place for watching trains. The problem is if I went there, I'd probably never be able to, I'd, I'd have to time my visit around the trains because I'd be taking advantage of it being such a great vantage point for the Swanage Railway. Although that said, as for Corfe Castle, have a look at the link on screen now. It's me exploring Corfe Castle Model Village, which has a brilliant model of Corfe Castle before it became ruined. So the next property, Hewingdon Manor. Now, this was quite an interesting visit. Um, they were having a Thomas the Tank Engine Day there, and Christopher Aldry was there, and I had a book signed by him. So I was still quite small, but I met Christopher Aldry there, um, and yeah, I've got a book signed by him. And they had this rather ridiculous looking um, lorry they'd made into Thomas the Tank Engine. It, it's quite an it was quite an amusing thing. <laughs> see what I'm talking about. Next property, Buckland Abbey down in Devon. I don't remember too much, I just sort of really remember there being a rockery there and you could see from looking at the house, because um, I, I, I like looking at ruined abbeys, so I remember sort of trying, sort of, I could work out what was, what parts were obviously the abbey once and where it had been built onto and that, but I really should go back there. don't remember too much and Next property is Castle Drogo. A castle built by Lutchins. It's possibly one of the newest castles there is. It was only built about, it was built in the, in the early um, 1900s by Edwin Lutchins. And I remember going around the castle, walking around the grounds. Next one, Winkworth Arboretum. That one I do remember quite well. It, it's a big arboretum down in Surrey near Godalming. I remember you sort of start up at the top and you work your way down through the woods and there's red hill rhododendrons everywhere and you end up down at the bottom of the hill and there's a few lakes along the way and you've got, got very nice views everywhere. So that, that's another nice property. Now on the same day we went to this one, Oakhurst Cottage. Now this was a little cottage nearby and I remember a lady showed you round and um, it was a little, I think it was a little thatched cottage. I have to go back there again and I don't know the significance on that one as to why the National Trust got it. Maybe it's just it was perfectly preserved, but perhaps we'll go back there and do a video one day. And the next one's Charcoat Park. I remember we went there, it's in Warwickshire, we went there on the way to a holiday up at, up near Bridge North in Shropshire. And um, I think it's the first place I recall seeing deer. Charcoat Park is one of about 12 maybe National Trust properties that have deer. The other notable, notable ones is Attingham, which we'll get onto in a minute. Um, Dunham Mass has got them, which I've never been to. Um, Warehouse has got them. Petworth has got them. The, the um, Belton House, which I haven't been to, and it's also got a miniature railway, so we'll definitely, definitely go there. That's got deer. So there's quite a few properties have deer. Denefa Park, which I think might be the next one, that's got deer. So that's Charcoat Park. Oh, and then talking of Attingham, Attingham Park. I know Attingham Park quite well, I've visited many times. Um, and um, when I lived in Shrewsbury, I used to volunteer there. So I know Attingham Park quite well. I used to volunteer with the, um, the estates team. So I know the estate very well. So the actual pleasure gardens aren't huge, but the wider estate is 
enormous. It's got something like 11 tenant farmers on. And um, if you know where to go in the gardens, you can see, or on the estate, I should say, you can see the railway line, which runs from Wolverhampton across to Shrewsbury. Now, the next one, Bent Hall Hall, I think it's one of the funniest names. It's um, quite a small property, but it's a very interesting, it's, um, it's a hall, it had a church by it. I remember the ponds, um, I remember looking for fish in one of the ponds and sort of moving the lilies trying to find the fish. It didn't have a huge garden, but it was quite good fun to, to explore. The next one's Carding Mill Valley. Carding Mill Valley, um, also known as the Long Mind, it's in Shropshire, it's near Church Stretton. If you catch the train up from up to Shrewsbury from up the Welsh Marches line, it's it's on your left basically. It's uh, it's really just a big area of land. There's no house, no pleasure gardens there, but it's a very nice place. It can be quite bleak though, but you get some lovely views on a clear day. Next one's Dunster Castle. Another one on that list where you can see trains from, you can see the West Somerset Railway. Um, quite a lot of memories there. I remember sitting having a picnic and seeing um, 7F number 53808 in the distance with a train on the West Somerset Railway. Um, I remember walking around the grounds. So it's a castle set up on a hill and there's sort of paths around the edges of the hill and going down to Dunster Watermill on the River Avon. So quite an interesting property. Laycock Abbey. I don't remember too much. I do remember how seeing the cloisters, I believe it was there, the cloisters are quite well preserved. It's quite interesting in some of the ones that have got Abbey in the name is because they've been completely flattened and they've been built on the Abbey. But with Laycock, they actually built kind of above it and they preserved the Abbey. So it's quite an exciting property. We should go there again at some point. We should go to all of these again at some point. Next one, Hinton Ampler down in Hampshire. I remember we went there for some family friends of ours, and I remember um, my friend and I, two boys, running around the garden, just enjoying it really, um, not taking too much interest in the history. But um, I just do remember sort of playing in the gardens there. Uh, we've got two more now, so this takes us up to 1996. We've got The Vine, which is in Hampshire. That's quite an interesting property, um, it's situated by a lake and then you've got the woods on the other side so you can do some quite extensive walks there. And then we're going to finish with Cogley Woodland Garden, which is down in South Wales. Now I remember that being one of the most exciting places I've ever been to, it seemed everywhere you went there were little streams, you went through the woods and there were steps up and down, it was just, just really enjoyable we must have gone well actually look at the date went in may yeah because i distinctly remember there being bluebells everywhere really was um, a lovely place so that brings us up to 1996 in the next video I'll talk you through my second one identical to this one to look at and um, i'll tell you the places i visited on my second national trust passport so hope you enjoyed it thank you very much for watching please do feel free to like subscribe comment tell your friends both about national trust and henry's adventures and you know go out Buy yourself one of these passports. Um, I bought my girlfriend this one for Christmas one year and um, said to her, you know, you can start collecting. You've got a long way to go if you want to catch me up, but you know, you can start. So yeah, why not buy, buy someone one for a Christmas present um, and go and visit them and, you know, get your passport stamps. Thank you very much for watching. Goodbye.